We're gonna build an image gallery with Next.js, Supabase, and Tailwind CSS that fetches data from a Postgres database and displays a grid of optimized, lazy loaded images with great performance. The finished repository demo link and written walkthrough are all linked in the description for you to reference as you build. Let's start by running create next app to clone the Next.js and Tailwind CSS starter application from the official examples folder. This will download and clone the repository locally to a new folder called image gallery and it will automatically set up our application with the latest version of Next.js and Tailwind. Now we can open our newly created folder inside VS Code and run npm run dev to start our local development server at localhost 3000 and we can see our hello world Next.js application. However, let's delete all of this code inside pages slash index and just put a hello world component here called gallery. Let's start using Tailwind to set up the container around the images in our gallery. I'll update my gallery component to add some styles to use CSS grid. This will define the layout of the images inside of the gallery, which will replace with the image component. These styles also set up some padding and define different breakpoints for how the grid will change based on the viewport. Let's go ahead and paste in some placeholder for an image component. And I'll go ahead and update this comment to actually use this new image component. Now, if I hit save, I'll see this placeholder image show up on the right in the browser. So let's take a look at this image component. It's wrapped with an A tag, which will allow me to link out to the source of this image. And then I also have an image tag as well as some metadata about the image, like the name and the Twitter user who submitted this image. Now I'm using a couple cool Tailwind tricks here, like the aspect ratio plugin, which I'll install in a minute, as well as group modifiers. So the neat thing about the group modifier is if I hover anywhere over this A tag, anywhere inside this component, it will actually lower the opacity of the image element by passing the group hover opacity 75 class directly to that component. And you can see this if I go over the browser and I hover anywhere over the text in the bottom or the actual image, the opacity is lowered. So as I mentioned, we'll want to kill our dev server and install the Tailwind CSS aspect ratio plugin. And now we can go into our Tailwind config and add this new plugin into the plugins array. Now, if we restart our development server, we go back to our browser and we hit reload, you'll see that the aspect ratio is maintained of one to one. We can ignore that the image is stretched. We'll fix that in a minute. This image component is a good start, but we wanna take this further and ensure that we have great performance as defined by core web vitals or how real users experience the performance of our website. And to do that, we can use the built-in Next.js image component, which is gonna give us better performance out of the box. At the top, I've imported image from Next Image, and I renamed the old image component to blur image to prevent a naming collision. So I'll also wanna update where we're actually consuming this image inside the gallery component. Inside the blur image, you'll see that I've changed a couple things that we were previously using on the native image tag. A lot of them are the same, like source and alt, but I've added this layout mode of fill as well as an object fit of cover. Now object fit actually just uses the underlying CSS property of object fit to ensure that we can fix our image being stretched as we can see on the right. So let's save. And you'll see I get this error on the right that says invalid source property. And now this is expected. The reason for this is we want to have an allow list of domains that we're telling Next.js, hey, you can optimize these images. This is for good security in our application to prevent people from trying to use our Next.js server to optimize any image. So let's go into our next.config.js file and we'll add a new key for images to our object and we'll define a list of domains that we want to optimize. In this instance, we're just using a placeholder image from a link shortener. So I'll hit save. I will kill our server, restart it, reload my page on the right in the browser. And now you'll see that we've fixed the stretching of our image by using object fit cover. And this image, if we had a long list, would be lazy loaded in as we scroll down the page. I'll show an example of this later.
Now I named this component blur image, but we're not actually doing a blur up placeholder effect as the image loads right now. So let's update this component to do that. First, we're gonna use react state to determine when it started and finished loading. Second, we're going to use this on loading complete prop, which will tell react when the image has finished loading. And then finally, we're gonna conditionally add some class names to our image to use CSS transitions and animation to change the opacity and the easing and the scaling of our image to give it this nice blur effect. At the top, I've also imported use state and defined a little helper function here to allow us to combine a list of class names that are conditionally added to our component. So let's save and let's try this out. So now, as you noticed on the right, when I refresh, there's this nice blurring and scaling effect that happens on our image as we load. Okay, now let's actually connect to Supabase and actually pull some real data from a database. I've already created a Supabase account and I have an organization called Vercel. So I'm gonna make a new project called Image Gallery and I'll add a new password for this database. I'll keep the default region of US East as that's also where I'll deploy my Vercel application and we can stay on the free tier. So I'll hit create new project and we'll actually kick off creating this Postgres database. As our database is provisioning, we're going to copy the secrets and the URL that we need to connect to our Supabase database. So let's copy and reveal this service role as well as this project configuration URL, which is the RESTful endpoint that we're gonna to use to fetch data. Next, back inside our application, we'll make a new file .env.local and this is where we'll put the values we copied from Supabase. So I've went ahead and pasted in the values here and I have two environment variables. The first we prefix with next underscore public that would allow us to expose it to the client side. In this instance, we're just gonna be using Supabase on the server side, but it's still good to know. And then I also have this service role key, which is a secret that we only want to use on the server side. So now that we have the environment variables, we can kill our development server, we can install the Supabase library so we can make a connection on the server. And finally, inside pages slash index, we can paste in some code that will create a new client and use the environment variables that we just created to make a connection to Supabase. Now this or empty string is just appeasing TypeScript here. If we wanted to, we could have some better error handling here where if the environment variable wasn't provided, we could make the build fail. Back inside Supabase, let's go over to the left to our table editor and let's make a new table so that we can add some data to our application. We'll call this images. And in this instance, we don't need to enable row level security because we're only using this on the server side. However, if we're gonna do user authentication or anything on the client side, we should definitely use row level security. So I'll keep the ID, I'll keep created at, and then let's add a few more columns to define some additional properties. So we have name, href, username, and image source, and all of these are going to be text types. So with that, we can hit save. That will create this new table images and add six new columns to the table. Okay, our table's good to go. Now let's add some data. We can insert rows using the UI. We could import from a spreadsheet or a CSV or we can add data using the Supabase client instance that we've instantiated inside of our application. I've went ahead and imported some data from a CSV so that we can have a bunch of images in our image gallery back in our application. So back in our editor, let's actually fetch this data from Supabase. So we've already set up our client to create a connection to Supabase, and we're gonna use this new function called get static props to fetch that data on the server side. So Git static props only ever runs on the server. We're able to fetch some data and forward it as props to the default exported React component from our file. In this instance, the gallery component. So with our connection, we can do a new query to Supabase admin from the images table, select everything and order it based on the ID. And then in the props, we're actually going to return a key of images as well as the new data that we've retrieved. Now, if I scroll down to the gallery component, you see that we're not actually consuming the data that we've fetched in Git static props yet. So let's do that. First, we'll define a type for the image that we're getting back from Supabase with the properties that we define on our table, the different columns. Then we can update the gallery component to take in this images prop 
that we retrieved from Get Static Props, and this is an array of images. Then we can iterate over those images or map over each image and forward that information to the blur image component, and we'll pass over that entire object as an image. Now we're getting a TypeScript error because we haven't defined this yet. So let's go back to blur image and do that next. So the blur image component will take in this image as a prop. It will use the type that we defined. And instead of using placeholder data, it will actually pull off this data from Supabase, like the image source, the name, and the username of the person from Twitter. So now if we hit save, we're gonna see the invalid source prop error again because we've changed the domain for where we're optimizing images from. So let's go back to next.config.js and we're gonna update this file to use the new domain from Twitter images. So we'll hit save, we will restart our dev server, reload the page, and we see our image gallery complete with all of these images fetched dynamically from Supabase. Now, if I resize the page, you'll see that my CSS grid is working. And as I scroll, you'll notice that the images lazy load in. All right, so I went ahead and pushed up my repository to GitHub with all my latest changes. And over inside Vercel, you'll see that it automatically recognizes this new repository. You can see all my, uh, all my fun testing repositories here. Uh, so I'm gonna click import. And this is gonna take me into the import flow. I'll keep this project name. It automatically picks the framework of Next.js. And then inside environment variables, I need to add the things that we had in our .env.local to connect to Supabase. Okay, so I just pasted those in and added both of those environment variables. And now we can click deploy. All right, so it looks like it was done in about 30 some seconds and we see our screenshot that our application was successfully deployed. We can click on the image if we want and that'll take us out to our new .vercel.app URL and our images load perfectly and have our nice blur effect. This looks really good. Because we use get static props, we actually generated a completely static site. So just some HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So if we were to go back to Supabase and actually change data inside of our database, we wouldn't see it reflected on this page unless we went into Vercel, we went to our dashboard, and we redeployed our latest commit, or we pushed up some new code. With Next.js 12.1, we actually introduced a new feature called on-demand ISR, or incremental static regeneration, that allows you to update your pages after they've been deployed. Let's add that here. Let's go back to Supabase and on the left, we'll click the database tab. And then let's click function hooks. Now function hooks allow us to listen for any changes on any of our database tables and then call some function. So let's create a function hook. We'll call this update images. We're going to listen to this images table that we've created. This is where it will watch for changes. We're gonna watch inserts, updates, and deletes and we're going to call some external API. Uh, this is coming soon, which should be launched very soon, but for now, we're just going to use this, and we're gonna make a post request to our application, our deployed.vercel.app URL slash API slash revalidate. Now, this doesn't exist, but we're about to create this in a second. And we wanna add an HTTP query parameter here, which we'll call secret, and then you can give this some super secret value that you'll store inside your application. Perfect. So let's hit confirm. And our function hook is now live and we'll send updates to this API. So let's create the API. Back in our editor, we'll reopen .env.local and we can paste in the secret that we just created here as revalidate underscore secret. So let's use this in our new API route. Inside pages slash API, Create next app includes this hello world API route that just returns some JSON. Let's rename this to revalidate. So we have that slash API slash revalidate like we specified in Supabase. And then I'll paste in some new code here. So let's take a look at what this does. First, we look at the query parameters to see if the secret that's forwarded from Supabase matches what we've set as an environment variable. If it doesn't, then we just return a 401 and we say this is unauthorized. This is important such that we can lock down this API route such that only trusted parties can access it. 
Then inside the try block, we're going to revalidate our index page. So we're actually gonna regenerate just that specific page on demand and then return some JSON saying that revalidated was true. And that's it. Before we deploy though, we should go back inside Vercel, go to our project settings, environment variables, and we can add that revalidate secret with the value of super secret and add it for all our environments such that the next time we deploy, we'll be able to use this value. So in VS Code or in our terminal, we can make a new commit, add on demand ISR, and push this up to our Git repository. And that's going to automatically trigger a new build inside Vercel. You see it just automatically shows up without even having to reload the page. Now this is gonna add that new slash API slash revalidate route, and it's gonna use the environment variable that we just created. Okay, so we're done deploying. Now let's try this out. Back in Supabase, we'll go to our images table and let's update some data. So this first row, I'll expand here and let's just change the name from Kevin to Lee. And I'll click save. And now I go back to my deployed application, I hit reload, and immediately you'll see the Conte update without needing to redeploy. That's on-demand ISR. All right, that wraps up this tutorial. We were able to build a Next.js application that displays a list of images fetched dynamically from Supabase, and we can update our content without needing to redeploy. If you enjoyed this video, hit subscribe and let me know down below what future videos you'd like to see me make. Peace.